I want to begin talking about how to be your most authentic self, to be your most fulfilled self, to be your most happy self, to be your most rewarding self requires, and I use the word deliberately, requires lots of other people around you. My name is Roy McEwen. I am married um, to a beautiful lady called Wendy. Uh, we have a son, um, Jonathan, and um, I'm a consultant. I'm also a non-exec director in companies. So CEOs like you and people that you know would um, invite me into their company to um, journey with them, to help them make um, good decisions for the business, also to chart a strategic path to growth and success. Um, my own journey includes um, uh, different businesses. I've been in satellite TV and also I've um, run my own um, IT hardware company and software company. And um, now I'm a consultant and I also um, have a couple of companies on the go as well doing things. So um, it's great to be here. And it's great to be talking about doing business God's way. And this is really, uh, it's, it's basically telling you a little bit about my, my journey, intersecting my journey. Because when I began doing business, I definitely didn't do it God's way at all. And um, if anyone had told me doing business God's way was more fulfilling, more, um, more sustainable, more enjoyable, more profitable, it makes you more wealthy, I would have said you're lying. Um, simply because um, no one had ever taught me that. Um, but I have since um, been on a journey where I have realized, I've learned, I've experienced that actually doing business God's way is by far the easiest way to do business, um, the most productive, and um, it's, it's more fulfilling and it's rewarding. And um, it is, it's a serious life. It's fantastic. So um, in the video that you, if, if you've seen it or if you, you go to watch it, I talk about a few things, about five key elements. And within them, I talk about praying for your, your suppliers, praying for your customers, praying for government agencies. Um, I also talked about freeness. Um, today, I want to, I want to, I'll, I'll cover those in a, I'll go in a little bit more detail with those, but I also want to include purpose. And um, I want to talk about, um, um, excuse me, I want to begin talking about how to be your most authentic self, to be your most fulfilled self, to be your most happy self, to be your most rewarding self requires, and I use the word deliberately, requires lots of other people around you, okay? Um, so we begin this now with the, the first, well, the second commandment. The first commandment is to love God. The second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. And that, in that simple sentence lies the phenomenal, massive world of business. Because if you love your neighbor as yourself, then, and if you think about this, if we all looked after someone else, right? we wouldn't have to look after ourselves because somebody will be looking after us, right? Um, so a broken system means that we all have to look after number one and number one only, okay? So, so if you just plant that in the back of your mind as we journey through understanding how we do business God's way, and we're going to, excuse me, begin with this simple thing of to be your most authentic um, self, you must have people around you. So you would have seen lots of um, memes on Facebook that says, you know, drop this person, drop negative people, drop this, drop this. Um, if you follow that through, every time somebody does something or says something negative or something that you don't like, guess what you're going to do? You're going to drop them, right? Um, you're not going to end up with a lot of people around you, okay? Um, the, the, the first thing that God does not teach us is that he doesn't teach us to um, drop people. I know lots of people say that, but actually there's no scripture that says um, drop people. 
we're told don't give our, our pearls to pigs, right? If you want to make a comparisons, but we're not told to drop people. And there's a reason for that. And that reason goes back to John 3.16, because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So God loves the very people that you're thinking about dropping, right? Now, the very people that you're thinking about dropping are also your neighbors, okay? So if you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself and you're dishing neighbors, then, you know, you're really not doing business God's way. So the thing is, love your neighbor as yourself is that irrespective of whether that person is kind to you, nasty to you, you will only give them the best of you, okay? So in business, that's what we're called to do is to give the best. What we would want for ourselves, we give to our neighbor, okay? Um, and if our, when our neighbor knows that uh, you have his or her best intentions at heart, Believe me, they, they, they're going to stay with you. They're going to buy from you. I mean, people who supply to you now, if, if you believe that they have your best interests at heart, would you not continue to buy from them? If your hairdresser is, has got your best interests at heart, are you really going to go to another one and try another one? You, you know, if you're barber, so think about, think about everything that you buy, right? Um, our DNA is wants us to be loyal right everyone's dna wants them to be loyal you want to express that loyalty so treating your customers in that way means that if you guys if you learn this just just of everything i'm going to tell you this evening if you just take away that point right you will never struggle in business again you will never be poor you could never fail in business because once you focus on giving of your best to your customers, you will always have customers. Um, some of the problems associated with that is when we just want our customers' money, but not them. Um, and that's where problems begin. So on this point, to, to have, so I've mixed two points there, um, which is about your customers, but also to be your most authentic, real self, most fulfilled self you cannot go around dumping people i know this is going to sound bad and some of you are going to say so would you expect me to do with them if they're horrible and nasty and not treating me right we can cover that in another session tools to deal with difficult people but actually to say that god wants you to dump your neighbor is is just not right okay so um so we have we, god's given us all the answers Today, we're just going to deal with a particular topic, right? But um, if you take this approach of I'm going to give my best to every single one of my customers and I'm going to treat everyone as my neighbor, guys, you will never, ever, ever be poor again. Um, so praying for your customers, your, um, your suppliers and government agencies, right? Um, I love the song Independent Woman, right? Uh, throw your hands up for me, right? Brilliant. Um, in reality, nobody's independent. Like, not one single person is independent. Nobody. We are all dependent, and we are all dependent on other people. But what we try to do is we try to live in such a way that we, we don't have to acknowledge our independence of others. So um, look at it like this. The pavements that you walk on was not provided by you. The, the, um, the car that you, you drive was not made by you. The, um, the clothes that you wear were not made by you. Nothing about you today, as in the entirety of you, if you wear glasses, um, if you've done your hair, whatever, you have not made everything yourself. You've not gone out and you know, read your own um, lambs, shared them, converted that into cotton, made your own um, fabric, dyed it to get colors. Y you've not done any of that. So we are 100% dependent on other people, 100%, not 30, not 40, not 10, not 99.999, 100% dependent on others okay so we have to pray for our suppliers because we are dependent on others 
we have to pray for our customers for their success. Because if you are struggling in business, um, selling, um, always having to cut your price, right? One signal could be that you're dealing with an exploitative um, buyer, or the other could be that your customers don't have enough money. So if your customers don't have enough money and you need more money from your customers in order for your business to survive, why wouldn't you pray for your customers? Pray for their success, pray for them in their jobs, that they're successful. You know, if you're, if you're working to become free from your job, pray for your employer, right? This is all gonna sound weird to some people, um, but trust me on this, pray for your employer, pray, pray for their success. Because if they're successful and you're contributing directly to their success and they can see you, that you're outstanding, you're contributing to their success, guess what, when it comes to pay rises, okay? Um, and by the way, I'm not telling you anything that I think could happen. I am telling you my own life experiences. So um, when you think about what I'm telling you and you're, you're gonna think, mm, I'm not too sure about that. I'm telling you my own experiences, so so that so let's just you know keep keep that in our minds as we go through. Pray for government agencies. This one makes everybody laugh, right? Um, people, I've had people curl up on the floor in laughter to me. Why would why on earth would I want to pray for government agencies? Well, again, think about this. Um, leave aside for the moment the idea of government agencies being ethical, being on forget all of that. But just think, government agencies are there to ensure the infrastructure of the country works. They're there to ensure there's roads, electricity. Obviously, it's an electricity company that does a generation, but the government agencies provide the regulation for those industries to exist. So water, electricity, gas, um, you name it, all rely on government regulation to make sure they're there and they sustain life, okay? You've got to pray for their success. You absolutely have got to pray for their success. Um, about 10 years ago, I was, I was doing a project out in the Isle of Grain and I was standing on one of these massive containers. So when you fly over, places you see these huge containers um, these energy containers so I was like a hundred and something um, um, feet up in the air on top of one of these containers and just reflecting on the health and safety um, course that we did a couple of months ago that if this thing exploded and I was on it they wouldn't even they wouldn't find anything to bury right they wouldn't find anything to bury. I would disintegrate okay and it was that moment, it dawned on me that, but for God maintaining these systems, working through governments, albeit they may be corrupt, working through governments to put the regulation in place to make sure these systems are available to us, but for God doing that, it will be carnage. It will be an absolute nightmare. So we've got to pray for those government agencies um, for their success for their integrity, for, um, for people of, of integrity and good character and honor to rise within their ranks, for people to be able to speak and speak up, um, for, for, for there to be transparency within those organizations. Um, and furthermore, God does say, pray for those in authority that you may have a peaceful life. So I'm not telling you anything that, that you shouldn't be doing that's, that's, that's onerous, but maybe just giving it a different context. And I'm going to wrap up now because time is, is running fast on. I'm going to wrap up now with the, with the one that everybody loves, right? And it's called freeness. Everybody loves a bit of freeness, right? And everybody loves to get something for nothing. It makes you feel good, you know? Um, but guys, freeness is the destruction of economy, okay? And God never, ever introduced freeness in economy. He introduced freeness for salvation, but not in economy, okay? And a good example of that is to read the story about the widow. In, this is in the Old Testament. The widow and, and the prophet 
and she went to him and said, look, my husband's been working for you all these years. He's dead. I've got debts and they've got to be paid off. You know, you've got to do something about it. So I'm going to skip to the back end of the story. So she gets all these jars. She fills it with oil. She keeps going until she has no more jars. And she was given a specific instruction. And the instruction was this. Go, sell all the oil, pay off your debts, and with the balance, live with your sons, right? Go, pay off your debts. She had to go and sell the oil and pay off her debts. There was no freeness. She got the, she got the, um, the harvest of oil which was, which, and she, she had to work for that, right? So the oil wasn't free because she had some oil. The, she had to go get jars, so she had to be convincing, and she had to go around the village, the town, the city that she lived in. And as many jars as she can convince people to give her is as much oil that she would have. So if she convinced people to give her 11 jars, that's all she'd have. If she convinced them to give her a million jars, that's how much she'd have. And even when she got the oil, she still had no money, right? That she had to get up and go and sell the oil. And interestingly, she had no relief from her debtors. She had to go pay them off. She had to sell the oil, pay the debtors, and the rest she had to live for her and her sons. So uh, just spend some time and think about this right everything costs money everything costs jesus's sacrifice costs costs god an awful amount and everything in 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 an economy is supposed to cost so guys don't be afraid to pay for everything yes get a discount but do not do not ever in doing business god's way accept anything for free because that's not doing business God's way. And that's not promoting economy either, okay? So in summary, I've covered a few things. I've covered to be your most authentic, real, fulfilled self. You must, must, must have other people around you. Dumping people is not being neighborly and it's not being consistent with loving your neighbor as yourself. You've got to pray for your customers, your, um, your suppliers, you must pray for government agencies. And guys, freedom. Thank you very much. I hope that's been helpful. Wow, 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 boy. Okay, <laughs> let's, start from, let's start from where you just dropped it. Um, because I know, I know some of my potential clients are watching who, who would like free coaching. So let's start from free. <laughs> so, especially in our community, um, especially in the communities we leave, and especially those of us from the church environment in quotes, we are steeped in wanting things for free. We want free coaching, we want free services, we want, <laughs> how 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 do we avoid free how what will be your advice to the coach to the business person what's that way to begin to educate our community to stop to learn to start investing in their growth investing in the things they want than for them to always keep seeking for free business and freebies yeah so Aaron, I think this is, this is such a deep question and where I'll start is this. All of us have been taught poverty. This is gonna sound odd, right? It's gonna sound odd. We have all been taught poverty. We have not been taught prosperity, okay? Wow. So we grew up, all of us, everybody has grown up, I shouldn't say everybody, the majority, right? have grown up learning about poverty, okay? Mm. So we learn about lack, we learn about insufficiency, we learn about um, that the reason for saving is for a rainy day, right? Not <laughs> investing, 
Okay, so yeah. we've been taught to be poor, and the majority of us grow up being poor. And even when we have lots of money, even when we're flushed with money, we've got three cars, we've got a six bedroom house, we are still operating from poverty knowledge. Okay, so that's the first thing to recognize is that the majority of us and when someone comes to you in, and says well why aren't you giving this to me for free you know you are dealing with poverty knowledge the person is beautiful they're great they're amazing they've just been educated um, from a from money point of view um, from a poverty knowledge set okay so how do you break that it, um, you you have to begin by simply explaining to people nothing is free and if you want it for free if you want it for free then sorry i can't provide it for free okay um, if someone is from the kingdom what i always refer them to is king david and potiphar and when um he when potiphar learned that the the what David's plans were, was to build a temple onto God. He says, oh, have it, you know, have the land, take it all. And David says something really interesting. He says, how do you expect me to build something onto the Lord that I got for free? It cost me nothing, you know? So actually, when you, when you learn about how God wants you to do business, if you accept anything for free and you don't hand over something for it, you, you're basically saying that the that basically freeness makes everything work, makes things work. Freeness makes nothing work. Right? So freeness is not harvest. Yeah. So and that's, and that's where the poverty knowledge comes in. That we is that. Even I, I did many years ago, associated, if I got something for free, I got excited thinking that was harvest. It's, it's not harvest. It's, it's um, you've accepted something, but you've just cut off economy, right? Yeah. So to close on this, I did, um, I, I spoke about this in the, on the video. Yeah. Um, and this was real. In a, in a workshop that I did, this lady really had a go at me for, um, for not wanting to coach her for free um, and not wanting to consult in her in her business for free. And I said, sorry, but, you know, things cost. Um, and and to make the point, I, I got everyone to, to get involved in this workshop. So it was I said, I'm I'm going to I'm going to start the economy off with 100 pounds and everyone's going to um, take five pounds and pass the rest on, spend the rest with someone else. Right. So we did that, and then we got around, when it got to about 20 pounds, I says, now, you don't pay on 15 quid, you keep the 20 quid. So it's like, great. So I'm like, you were expecting 15 pounds, come on, get into the economy, spend 10 pounds with, um, with the next guy. He says, well, I've got no money. And I'm like, ta-da, you know? Um, so freeness destroys economy. So guys, if you're watching this and you love to accept things for free, stop it. Pay something. You don't, as, as in the law says, it doesn't have to be, consideration doesn't have to be sufficient. It just has to be. You have to pay something, right? Um, and, and to wind this up really, really tightly, remember when the, the lady who, who paid her tithe, she paid a penny, and that was valued more than paying loads, right? Yes. It's not the amount, it's the fact that you have a heart, you understand God, and you have to pay. And there's an exchange. So it's that Absolutely. exchange. Absolutely. And I tell, I, tell, I tell my clients, the, the reality really is that the transformation happens in the transaction. Mm. Absolutely, <laughs> because, because yeah. actually, you know, market, I think the Hebrew word for market is faith. Or something yeah. like that. I need I need to look this up. But the Hebrew word for market is faith, and it's a transaction between two people, and yeah. both of you have got to benefit, not one. Wow. So let me let me dig into that a bit because 
it's not it's not many people who speak about these things, right? So um, even amongst my clients, when when I'm my people people within my masterminds, when I begin to when I begin to talk to them about the concept of abundance, and and you know you hear a lot of people talk about saving savings and being thrifty and things like that. So there's there's that there's that line that are you telling us are you telling us that. Um, we shouldn't be saving. I'm not telling you not to budget and things like that, but I don't want people to hear it from me. But I, I have this whole concept of abundance, as in, and that concept of abundance comes as a result of how you see God. When you understand that with God, nothing finishes. Everything is replenishable. I cut my hair and it all grows back. Yeah. Then you begin to then you begin to understand whose you are. So it's it's so when I heard when I heard you speak at the summit, I was like, wow. So do you mean there is someone else who who, who is speaking these things? Because I, I only discuss some of these things just with my small network, and I was like, we need to get you so that we can get this message louder. Where 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 have you picked this knowledge? How have you gotten into that? <laughs> Just so that, because we don't have enough time, just so that people yeah, can yeah, possibly yeah. go research for themselves. Okay. So um, so um, in 2007, I basically lost everything. I, I, I um, literally, when I mean lost everything, I don't, I don't mean I, I had a house and, uh, you know, I had, I lost absolutely everything um, that I had. I was in six figure debt Ooh. and um I had nothing. Uh, the, the, the business was, was was gone. All the money was gone. Literally everything was gone. And um, I remember um, crying. I, I, I cried my eyes out. And in the middle of all of that, I heard um, a, a little voice just say, say, say to me, um, do your expenses. Um, so I So I began putting down stuff. But you know, when you're in that place where your mind's not focused. So I started putting down a few things, the obvious things, and I got prompted, no, put down everything, go through it, go for it, put down all your debt, put down everything, put down um, your savings. How much do you want to save a month? Um, do you want to go on holiday? Put that down as well. Do you, um, all, all the little chocolate bars that you used to eat, put it down. So I literally built my, my whole expenses and and then long story short um i got an assignment and the amount of money that i calculated for my expenses is exactly on an annualized basis is exactly what i was offered as remuneration for that assignment okay and the lesson that i learned there was um the scripture that says what man wanting to build a tower does not count the cost, okay? Yeah. And I was, I literally was flabbergasted because it was the first time in my life that I had counted the cost, not just for how much it cost me to live, but for how I wanted to live. How much does that cost, right? So imagine, you know, if you want three holidays a year, that's going to cost money. If you want four holidays a year, if you want whatever you want to do cost money. So what do you calculate within your expenses? So actually, you have, and you have to calculate your expenses so that you're able to afford everything that you want. And I shared in, in a recent mastermind that when you do your expenses, and let's say you put in stuff like maintenance. So if you think back, you've um, you've had a burst pipe at some point. You've you've had something go wrong within the house, and you've had to call out a tradesman. Well, if you budget for that, and it happens, are you going to be worried? No, oh. right. If you budget for personal development, if you put aside um, two weeks of the year, week of the year for personal development, and you budget, you know, six seven hundred pounds. For personal development, a thousand. I mean, I mean, we're talking small fry here. There are people I know who put aside ten and twenty thousand pounds for for personal development. Okay, so if someone puts aside six hundred, begins with you know three four hundred pounds to put aside for personal development, 
when it comes to being coached and to, to get valuable insights, to open up your mind, to expand your horizon, to recognize that God isn't limited, he's unlimited, to learn these truths and insights into how to grow your business. And that's the key, is that you're being coached for your business. You've got to pay and you've got to budget the money so that therefore you've got to do your expenses. Wow. Wow. I, I, I think we should, okay, let, let's stay here. So um, I was going to ask a question around what's the mindset of a, a successful entrepreneur, but then what what should be, because I'm not sure many, many even Christian entrepreneurs have this mindset you're speaking. So how, what if you, if you could just give us some kind of list or detail as to what the mindset of everyone who's watching, who wants to grow a Christian business, who is a Christian entrepreneur, how should they be developing their minds and their thinking, especially around abundance and doing business God's way, which is what we're talking about today? Brilliant question. Um, I went to a, a um, Christian business um, breakfast back in 2005, I think it was, in, um, in um, Swiss Cottage. And I was the poorest guy there. I was absolutely the poorest man in that room. Um, I saw some men, um, there were some very well-known um, uh, names in that room. And um, I just sat there and we went through the whole thing and we were listening to stories of people who, one man in particular that stood out, his story, he said he, he ran a construction company. And um, I'm, I'm going to get around to answering the question, but I, I want to tell you the story because it, it, it sums up the whole thing. He ran a construction company and um, one day he was in a prayer meeting and um, uh, he, he kept looking at the, a, a particular guy in the prayer meeting. And the Holy Spirit told him, um, can you write a check for a certain amount of money to this guy? Wow. And in his head, he said, no way in hell because he said that was the sum of money that he'd saved up that was his savings right he'd worked hard 10 years building the business and everything like that and then he's got this voice in his head um write this check he said no so he said he could he had no peace it kept on and he kept looking at the guy so next thing he nudged his wife told his wife um and she says um, clearly, you've not been dreaming, you've been hallucinating, right? <laughs> so, um, so then she said, let's pray. They prayed. Um, she then looked at him and says, actually, you've got to give the guy the money. So he says, well, fortunately, as you know, I don't carry my checkbook with me, so I'm off the hook. So next thing he said, he touched his pocket and he felt something in his pocket. He went inside there's the checkbook. And his wife is like, you need to write this check now because you never walk with money or, the, or this checkbook. He wrote the check, takes it to the guy, hands it to the guy and he says, look, you better take this check really, really quickly because um, if you don't take it, I'm gonna take it back because this is my life savings. The guy took the check, burst into tears and explained to him, look, um, uh, you don't understand what you've done. You've saved 20 people's jobs because literally I've come to this prayer meeting to pray to get peace for tomorrow morning to go wind up the company. Wow. And he said, you've just saved the company because we are getting a check in the next couple of weeks, which is going to put me straight, but I, I've got to pay people tomorrow. So this guy says he's going home now and he's like saying to the Lord, Lord, you know, what have you got me to do? This is crazy. So the next morning he woke up and there was this thought in his head and he thought it was just a thought that I'm going to give you 10 times what you've just paid, right, to this guy. And he goes, he was like, no, nah, that's just my ego. That's just me. He says, literally within 24 hours of handing over the check, a deal that he lost, they phoned him up and said, look, we need you to come and fix this site. Um, he says, look, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare you the, the, um, the, the quotation. They goes, forget it, no quotation. 
come fix it and send us an invoice we'll pay you whatever you want we just need it fixed by a particular date any price any cost just fix it he said he did that and when he um, calculated everything at the end of the project he had for his takings 10 times what he gave the guy right and that's how he became a multimillionaire, right? He, he gave away his life savings of 10 years worth of savings and became a multimillionaire from doing that. So guys, the, the whole issue here to answer the question is, that was his experience. Your experience yeah. made a difference, right? But the issue is we're dealing with a God that's unlimited okay Whoa. so and so to wrap it up think guys go back to the beginning imagine if you were around at the beginning of creation i know we couldn't have been but try to picture it god is there and he speaks words right and those words go out and transform into things right so the word yeah. word go out he said let there be light and then there was the sun and the moon yeah. and stars yeah. right his words trans transferred into stuff, right? Yep. So guys, I'm gonna end with one thing. What stuff are your words transforming? Yeah. Wow. So, so just listening to that story, I hear someone who has learned how to hear God. Right. So that person has definitely gone through the discipline. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's the, the person has cultivated that discipline of hearing God. That 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 person at that point didn't get to the point where he thought, no, nah, this can't be God. So definitely I can see little disciplines along the way uh, to for God to believe that they can count on him, on him for God to think that I can Absolutely. count on him. At Absolutely. this point, you know, it, it was the kind of experience God had with Abraham, you know, um, um, uh, God said concerning Abraham, you know, God was so confident with Abraham he said, is there anything I can tell Abraham? Because Abraham had found himself faithful, right? Exactly. So how do we train our ears? So one of the things you talk about praying for your clients. And one of the things I do with my clients is I pray with my clients every morning at 5 a.m for those in close coaching relationship with me. So I, we get up at 5 a.m. and we'll pray. And one of the prayers I'm constantly praying over them is that God will give them ears that hear, ears that yeah. hear, ears that hear, and eyes that see. So how do you train yourself to have ears that hear? Because that man was not hearing with a natural ear. He was hearing something else, and that's that. That's the true picture of ears that hear. So could you just elaborate on, just so yeah. that we can help someone out here today? It's, it's simple, but it's, 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 the process is not simple, but it, it is Ooh. a really simple thing. And it's in faith, right? Um, something I had to deal with is the concept, you know, when people say, um, God's not talking to me anymore. And I got sucked into that way of thinking. And I used to think God's not talking to me. And I went on a journey to learn um, what's the benefit to God to stop speaking. Ooh. So that was my journey. That's where I had to, to be. That's where I began. What is the benefit to God to stop speaking? There is zero benefit to God to stop speaking. Zero. There's none. Right. So when you understand that, you understand God is actually speaking to you non-stop, like non-stop. Non he does not stop, right? We might stop listening, but he does not stop speaking, right? So, so now it's about when you recognize God does not stop, you have to now understand in faith, what will God tell you and what won't he tell you, okay? So, for example, you know, somebody said, they found 20, um, they went to a shop, they got the wrong change, God bless them. No, that's not a blessing. That's, wow. that's a curse, right? Because God says, I love equal weights and measures, right? So you've not been given 
what you would do, you were given what you're not due. You're supposed to hand that back, right? So, so, so when you understand these things, you realize that in faith, so in faith, you've got something that, that so you've got more change than you should. You know, I've actually got to hand that back. That's not mine, right? And the more you do these things, the more you operate in faith and you recognize what is, what is faith and what is not faith, right? So keeping the money is not faith at all. It's actually stealing. So you've broken a commandment, right? Um, is, is you begin listening and you begin realizing, right, okay, God is speaking to me. From, from, this, this, from tonight, guys, if um, you're paying attention to this, Begin testing, like Paul says, test everything that, that goes through your mind. Every one of us, thoughts go through our minds. And all you need to do is to test whether this thing that's going through my mind gives life or does it end in death? Not as in physical death, but does it end with, so like freeness cuts economy off, right? Does it end with something ending, right? And that's a simple way to begin listening to God, because there's no benefit to God to stop speaking. There's also no benefit to God to speak to you once a day, or once a week, or once a fortnight. There's no such concept, right? Because God wants to live, God wants a relationship with us in spirit and in truth. And it's not spirit and in truth part-time, or on a Sunday morning, or on a Thursday afternoon, on a Tuesday um, lunchtime, it's full time, right? So if the Holy Spirit's working through us, right, that means God is speaking to us constantly, all the time. It's just whether we are ready, willing, um, open to listen to what God is saying and do what he's saying. And the final thing on this, which, and I'll tell you about a blocker that stops you, is the whole thing about your will, okay? So somebody comes up to you and they offend you. Your will kicks in and you want to give them a piece of your mind, right? And within the scheme of things, you may be right to give them a piece of your mind. But God won't tell you to give them a piece of your mind. What he will tell you is to do something else, is to do something proactive. And normally that proactive thing, you say, I'm not doing that. No way. I'm not doing that. Never doing that. Right? And I'll give you an example. My wife and I went into business um, with somebody. We um, contributed a significant amount of money to that project, right? Um, um, long story short, they did not treat us very well, okay? And this is a Christian um, person as well. They did not treat us very well. So we withdrew from, from the business and we licked our wounds. We were pretty hurt by the whole thing, right? And the Holy Spirit took me on a journey, asked me, if they came to you needing money, would you give it to them? I was like, you must be mad. <laughs> so I'm not doing it. No way. Yeah. And then I heard a, a clear message. The Holy Spirit said to me, then you're not ready. It's not ready for what? Ready for what? Right? Within a few months again, I was asked the question again. I said, forget it. They're not getting anything from me. They're not even getting a glass of water from me. Right? Um, again, I heard, I heard, you're not ready. And, I, and that started to panic me now because I'm hearing the same thing twice. So the third time I said, okay, I'll consider it. The voice again, you're not ready. A few months again, it was like, would you? And by that time I started praying, Lord, help me to forgive these guys. Help me to let it go. Forgive these guys for what they've done. Um, and then I got to the point where in my mind, I was like, yeah, if, if they need help, I'll, I'll, I'll help them. What happened before is gone and I'll, I'll just help as much as I can. Um, and when I did that, I got the question again and I said, yeah, I'll help. And I heard, you're ready. You're now ready for, for what I'm going to open to you. Wow. And believe me, um, it was incredible absolutely incredible what's been happening then and now so in summary it's easy right it's easy but the process to get there may not be easy so but the first place to start is to recognize that guys god 
He's speaking to you 24-7. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I can stay on this because um, my clients are telling me these are, the, these are the kind of conversations we have most of the times, especially around the money. But let me move around. Let me move to some of the other things you talk about a lot. Um, um, you talk about praying for government agencies, right? Yep. How do you pray for tax collectors? <laughs> and what appears to be a system that does not acknowledge God. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's um, this one always gets people going. You, you know, how do you pray for tax collectors in the same yeah. way? You, you pray for them to be fair. You pray for them to have integrity. You pray for them to um, to uh, to apply the rules. Um, you pray for them to be open about the rules. Something that I do that I encourage my clients to do is phone up HMRC. What most people, excuse me, what most people don't do is they don't phone up HMRC and they don't ask them, can I claim for so-and-so, right? So what they do, they sit down and go, I died this tax man, or look, I've got a bill for this and da-da-da-da-da, right? Um, one of, one of, one of the guys I, I mentor, he always teases me. He goes, Roy, I'm not like you. I can't sit down and read the HMRC website, right? But I do that. I, I literally go through the website looking for, can I, can I claim for, for this? Can I claim for that? Can I claim for this? How does this work? What's this? What's that? And you will not believe there are rules out there to save you an absolute fortune. If you don't go find it and apply it the way HMRC wants you to apply it, you won't get the benefit, right? So simple things like, um, simple things like if, if you've registered a company and you're running your business and you use a part of your home for your business, you can charge that part of your home to your business, right? You can charge all of the, if you pay rent or your mortgage, the electricity, everything, you can charge that to your business. That is absolutely legal, right? Um, but again, if you, if, you don't, if you don't make the calls, you won't find out. And if you don't pray for them, you might be afraid of them. And so what you end up doing is not, um, not engaging with them the way you should. So I say pray for them. Pray for their integrity, pray for their openness, pray for their transparency, pray for, um, I mean, I know some people who've tried to pray for the tax man would make a mistake and let them off. Their <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend you don't do that, right? Error in our bank accounts. Yes, exactly. Error in our bank accounts. Don't pray for stuff like that. Um Pray, pray for, pray for the tax collector to do his job properly to the letter of the law, not take a penny more, not take a penny less. And you will be surprised because, you know, if you give on to Caesar, what did you want to Caesar? If you in your mind, um, because the whole thing about tax begins before you even begin to trade, right? If before you begin, most people start to trade and then worry about the tax man after. Big mistake. Don't do that. If you're doing it, stop, right? Go back, plan your business, plan to pay the tax man his money, okay? Because again, if you budget to pay the tax man his money, when it comes around to paying him, guess what you don't have? You don't have a headache, right? So budget to pay the tax man and pray for him huh, as well. Wow. Thank you. Uh, just, just so that I could get um, uh, people to get an insight by the um, way, a, a somebody more. said somebody said pray for your enemy. The tax yeah. man is not your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can get they can get some insight into um, who you are. I mean, when when we had conversations, we had this conversation sometimes last week. How how does someone? How do you? Would you consider yourself a technologist? Um, or or uh, and how do you get inspiration? So, but this is where I'm going. How does someone think up? I mean, you were one of the people, possibly the first, right, who started a satellite business here in the UK or something like that. And then at one point you had your own computers. How does yeah. someone receive such inspiration? 
You know, if 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 people are thinking of business right now, they're thinking of things that someone else has done or we're copying someone else. How how do you get that inspiration to be the first at, at doing those things before everybody comes in? Okay, well it's it's um, pretty straightforward this one. Um, it really depends on your focus and your purpose. If you understand your focus and you understand your purpose, you just live out that. So mine's um, was I began business in satellite TV. I then moved into um, computers when uh, satellite TV industry uh, nosedive. But computers was really the thing that I was always into since I was a teenager. So um, if you if you have if that's your purpose, and if you know that's what your purpose is, you just have to go for it. Um, but to answer your specific question, it's more about purpose. It's understanding who you are. And understanding also that, you know, God's called you to be the best. Um, it, he hasn't called you to be mediocre, and it hasn't called you to just get money. Uh, I remember my son when I asked him one time, um, what are you going to do when you leave university? He goes, get money. <laughs> like, oh, Lord, what have I done? You know, um, but don't just get money because there's no such concept. What you have to do, you have to transfer value and the value oh. you transfer, you get money. It's so, true. yeah. So, so the thing is, with your purpose, it's now, so if your purpose is to be a hairdresser, be the best in the world right not just a hype that i'm good be the best learn your craft understand the details and go for it you know if you are um if you do nails do the same thing if you make clothes if you do shirts if you make suits if you if you are a cleaner i've, I've got a friend who is a, a cleaner and i'm telling you she is she is apps she wants to be the best in the world right so when you do those things, guess how much the best in the world gets in terms of payment? Yeah, the best in the world are not cheap. The best in the world yeah. in every field get top dollar, right? I've got another yeah. friend who's a plumber, okay? He is about 35% more expensive than every other plumber that I know, okay? But guess who my wife and I call every single time when we have a plumbing job we call the same guy you know why he's more expensive but he spends less time in our house he leaves Whoa. it there, right he gets it done like that and um when he leaves you don't have to call him back to fix it right so the answer to this question is about purpose understanding your purpose and if you are in a sector where you can innovate, or if it's part of your purpose to be an innovator, which is part of my purpose, is to innovate. I'm, I, I come up with ideas sometimes. Actually, as I'm walking along, I will get an idea. And I, because, and right in, in now, I'm developing about three projects, which um, will be launched in the next six to nine months of stuff that I've been given. And I'm about to launch that to support. Um, a whole raft of sectors. So if, know what your purpose is. If, if, if you're, whatever your purpose is, be the best that you can be in that field. Thanks, thank you. Still on that subject of purpose. So when, when, I, when I look at your, your, your bio and especially your Twitter accounts, it just always cranks me up. So you, you describe yourself as a, um, a geek 25%, executive 15 percent um a life coach 10 percent an entrepreneur 50 percent could you give me give us some insight into <laughs> into how you've made these percentages of because I'm, i see them as they're, they're your different various expressions you know so Absolutely. how have you come, come about these percentages You've hit the nail on the head. And, and tie that into purpose because there's someone who's looking, who's listening, and they think, hey, I can only be a nurse. I can only be right. this, right? Yeah. You know, and okay. I'm, always, I'm constantly telling people that God is constantly seeking expression through us. Do you understand? Yeah, so, absolutely. How come you're limiting God to just that expression? In yeah. a season, yes, 
But when you walk that expression, you find that he's, he's, he's releasing to you more expressions of him if you're willing to take the journey. So, but it would be good to hear from you. That's it. So, you know, we, we use the phrase, I can do all things. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a meme, to be honest, for most of us. It's, um, it doesn't mean anything. And, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll say this on purpose, right? Um, I, I was in church one day. This lady um, uh, said to me, Roy, I'm really tired. You know, I'm in all these ministries. I, I think I'm going to give it a break because uh, I'm, I'm spending too much time in the church. So I'm like, okay. Um, so what makes you think you're, you're spending too much time? It's because I'm, I'm here Monday to Monday to Sunday. I'm like, okay, so, what, so that's, why does that mean you're spending too much time? She goes, well, I'm here every day. I'm like, so whose strengths are you working in? Your own or the Holy Spirit? And she goes to me, of course I'm working in the, in the strength of the Holy Spirit. I'm like, I'll ask you the question again. Whose strength are you working in? Yours or the Holy Spirit? And she calmed down a little bit, but, and, but, but, but agreed. So I asked her again, whose strength are you actually working in? Yours or the Holy Spirit? And she goes, well, maybe a bit of my strength, I think. So I said to her, I think it's all your strength. If you're tired, it's all your strength. Because the Holy Spirit's been around. The Holy Spirit's been around. Say that again. If you're tired, you're working in your strength. Yeah, you're working in your own strength because the Holy Spirit can't get tired. How does the Holy Spirit get tired? The Holy Spirit can't be tired. So when we get tired, we're working in our own strength. When we get to that mental stage of being of being like, I've had enough, I, my brain needs to shut down, it's because we're working in our own strength. And this is the bit, if, if you get your answers from the Holy Spirit, you don't, have to, you don't have to hurt your head about anything. So remember, when Jesus said, I must go, the Holy Spirit must come, the Comforter must come and will bring all things to your remembrance. If you limit that to all things that I, I need to know at a particular time, fine. But if you expand that to everything I need to know, everything I need to know, the Holy Spirit will bring it to my remembrance, then guys, I'm telling you, you've just, you have just entered a whole new realm of living, right? A whole new realm of living. Have I answered your question? So, so you, well, you have. No, so, I wanted to know how how you divvy that up. But I, so that's the oh, first yes, time yes, I'm yes, actually yes. hearing so it. That let me way come on to that. I, so, I, normally, I normally tell. So, let me say something so that you can you can um, you can up level that. So I normally tell my clients that um, when you find yourself overwhelmed and you say, "I'm burning out" and stuff like that. A lot of the time is because you're under purpose. Because one thing I know about purpose is that purpose will always strengthen you. So to actually now hear the way you're talking about, you've just explained it, that your rest should actually be in the Holy Spirit, right? So Absolutely. If, if he's the one carrying this ship, if he's the one running this stuff, how can you be tired? So exactly. link that and purpose. That's just amazing. Just so that we can yeah. get more meat from that. Okay. So, um, so God's given everyone a purpose. Um, every all eight, nine billion, seven billion, how many ever of us are on the planet, every single one of us have got a purpose and we have a role to play in the lives of everybody else. Okay. Um, and so when operating by the Holy Spirit, if we're being led by the Holy Spirit, then we're doing what the Holy Spirit's telling us to do, to meet the needs of everybody else around. Yeah. So, um, so it's not difficult if you're working through the Holy Spirit to, um, to one, maintain your purpose. And, you know, you hear the phrase, if you um, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, right? And that is, that is so true. So if you're working by the Holy Spirit, you'll get to nine o'clock at night and you, you'll be like, I haven't really done much today, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if you're working in your own strength, you will get to nine o'clock and you'll be absolutely wasted, right? And one of the things I say to my wife is this, I'm so grateful that I have the Holy Spirit to rely on because I can't imagine going through life trying to work out everything myself, okay? Trying to, in, in working with people, trying to work, right, well, this person's like that, so I'll do this. And if they say this, I'll do that. And if they do that, I'll do this. I'm like, I will go nuts. 
right? So, but a lot of people, even Christians are like that. They tell you what you're going to answer before you've even answered it. That tells you they've already, they've, they are going nuts in their brains trying to work out how they are going to manage the situation. So they say, I've, I've left it all to God. As long as he does it my, the way I've worked it out in my head. Yeah. yeah, right. So now to answer your question, the other bit is, is this. Um, when my wife and I were going to get married for the second time, because I've married her twice. Um, wow. Yeah, I married her twice. We got married, divorced and remarried. OK, wow. so when marry her, that's a whole different story again. Yep. I was going to marry her the second time. I was like, I have no idea how myself and this woman are going to really blend, right? Um, but back then, I was looking to see. I wanted, to, I wanted to see before I believed, rather than believe, then 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 walk into seeing. Yeah. Right? So I couldn't see how we were going to blend until we began to walk, do marriage together, and walking, and then. I realize God's made me a bit of a social butterfly. Um, she is a foodie. She absolutely loves to cook stuff. And she would be like, Roy, come and help me in the kitchen. Now, my role in the kitchen is to eat, um, not to do anything else. I have, I don't, I can't put together anything. When I go into the kitchen, I go to see food. I, I, I can't see ingredients and then look to put that together to make food, right? So, so God is so amazing. He's brought us together and we he's blended us so perfectly that now in the ministry that we're in, which is pre-marriage, we do a pre we run a pre-marriage course twice a year and we take people through learning God's blueprint for marriage. We're exceptional at that. Absolutely yeah. exceptional at it. Not just because we were divorced and we've got that experience, that life experience but actually because we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's where my um, life coach bit comes 10% because of how okay. much um, you devote to that. Okay, I see. Um, and so that's how we break it up. But that statement was written to get attention. And yeah, to, that's get the attention. Absolutely. And to also yeah. demonstrate that no one person is single faceted. We all yeah. have multiple roles god-given roles in our lives so we're for, so for you and i we're we're husbands we're fathers we're sons we're nephews we're uncles we're brothers you know we're confidants to we're friends. priests we're priests we're yep. coaching yeah we are all these different things in our lives and no one person can just be one thing it's not possible god never made us in that way so um, if when we restrict ourselves to one thing, that's us restricting ourselves to one thing. And some people may do that for very good reasons. So some people might say, you know, in this season of my life, I've just, I'm just going to look after the kids, or I'm just going to do this one. And that's, and that's perfect. But we have to remember that's us making, exercising our free will to do that. So for yeah. someone else who says, do you know what? I'm just going to be abandoned to the Holy Spirit and whatever you want me to do, I'll, I'll, I'll get it done, right? And you see them working like in our own minds thinking that's a mad person, right? No, they're not mad, you know? That's how people see me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you're not <laughs> mad. <laughs> you, know, you are working through a power that um, that is greater than you. I, I mean, I've got some friends who, when they work, I'm like, whoa, you know? I wish I, I, could, yeah. I wish I had all that energy. Um, I think of myself as being, as being quite lazy. But when people look at me, they're like, dude, where'd you get the time to do all this stuff? Right? Yeah. So um, because I am trying daily, um, um, continuously to work by the Holy Spirit and work by my own strength, because I realize my strength is not very good. Um, for work um it's not very good for solving problems um the holy spirit solves problems much better than i do and all i have to do is is ask nice 
we're, 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 we're going to try and begin to bring this to so um let's let's kind of talk about where where the world's at so these times have had a massive impact on people's economy yeah and 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 you talk a lot about doing business God's way. So, what would you say to people in this season who depend on their careers and regular jobs for their livelihood? I would say, guys, um, uh, pray for your pray for your um, employers, but um, also start a business. Um, if you look at, um, so, okay, so God's given us information about the end times, and it's up to you to do something with it, right? So it says in the end, people will be marrying, giving in marriage, having birth, all that. So right up until the end, there's going to be a hive of activity, and then bang, something's going to happen, right? So our job is to be part of that hive of activity up to that point okay so um if you look at the world today and what is going on the world is in a lot of um pains and if you look recently what happened with george floyd in america and how that has sparked an international step change right yeah. and it sparked an international step change in terms of people's eyes have opened, I mean, we're in 2020, and it's incredible how 2020 is living up to its name, 2020, <laughs> right? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. So when you look at what's happening in this world um, and, and in governments right now, the COVID-19 um, pandemic has made lots of Western governments borrow enormous sums of money to keep the economy from going into a recession, okay? That very um, thing of borrowing that sum of money is going to hasten a recession because at some point that money's got to be paid back. Taxes have got to go up and all that sort of stuff. So what should you be doing now? You should be starting a business now. You should be looking to pay down debt now. You should be looking to, um, get yourself into niches to be able to scale your business because there is always going to be a transfer right when the world goes through shocks like these lots of companies that were incumbents go bust and other companies come along and fill the, and fill the space so so guys i'm not predicting xyz companies going to go bust I'm just telling you, if you look at the cycles of history and you look at what's going on today, take your emotions out of it, take, um, take, just clear the slate and just look at the cycles and look at what happens when these things happen, you will see that there's opportunities coming at the back end of this, right? Huge amounts of opportunities with the economy opening up people are going to be, uh, begin buying again. But now, differently, people are not going back to spend money the way they're used to, okay? Um, people are going to rely on home delivery services more and more, okay? Mm -hmm. Which means you need to get better at finding customers online. Um, so there's a whole change coming into our economy that is going to be absolutely exciting. And if you can set up your business you can set it up as a platform, you are going to be an incredible business person. So I will recommend in this season, guys, start your business. Um, if, you, if you don't know, clearly, if you don't know what to do, then you need to first get down on your knees and pray and walk and ask God, you know, show me what I'm really good at and, and get into it that way. Um, but I believe this is the season for God's people to be starting businesses. Wow. So I'm just looking at the time and I've, there's so much flowing through me to want to ask. We definitely have to do this again. Let me allow you give, I'm looking if people have questions. If you have questions, you can, you can um, ask and I'll, I'll read them out. Let me allow you begin to give us some kind of final words, especially for the seasons in which we are. 
this conversation was really about um, making money God's way. And mm. especially for me and most of my clients and most of the people I, I, I attract, yeah, most of the people I, I, I attract uh, people, um, especially from the, from the, from the church. And in terms of wisdom, we just seem to be really backwards. <laughs> we, 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 we seem to be late to catch on. You know, how can we, where can people find this kind of information? Where can, where can people, actually, let, let me go here. So I know you mentor a lot of people. So do you have mentors yourself? Where, well, who pours into you and where do you, because I was, I was, I did a teaching on Saturday and, and I, I said some things that probably rocked a few of my clients and things that I said, listen, you can't do everything by yourself. You need to have outside help. There needs to be help. You need to get mentors. You need to get coaches. You need to get people to get on your side and help you. Somebody has to make mention of you to the to to Pharaoh, just like it happened for 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 Joseph. So, what's that relationship for you? What are your mentorship relationships? Um, how who pours into you when you get your inspiration that you're pouring into so many people yourself? Yeah, you you've got to have uh, you've got to surround yourself with successful people, and um, there may be times in your life where um, they're not they're not many, and that's not a problem. But as 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 you've said, as you've said, Aaron, is that you you've got to have an inflow, and um, to be able to outflow. So um, many many years ago. Um, without um, knowing the benefit of a mentor, um, this millionaire um, used to mentor me. He decided he was going to mentor me. He says, "Roy, you're 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 going to do well, you know, and I'm I'm going to teach you a couple of things." Um, he wasn't a Christian, but he taught me um, quite a lot of things. And actually, as a matter of fact, he taught me something that made me think. He said, um, "He taught me something." He said, "Sales." Um, that who was the best salesman that ever walked the planet Earth? I'm like, I have no idea. Lee Iacocca, you know? <laughs> he goes to me um, and he dropped the F-bomb and said it was Jesus. And I was like, Jesus? He's like, yeah, the best salesman that ever walked planet Earth was Jesus, okay? Um, so uh, I've had mentors in my life from, from then to now, and uh, um, and it's a it's a fantastic thing to do. You've got to have people that you're accountable to, because um, if you don't, um, it demonstrates something about your character. If you're if you're accountable to nobody, oh. um, it demonstrates something about your character that's not pretty wise. Um, you've got to be accountable to somebody. You've got to be able to go to somebody um, to say, look, um, here's what's going on in my life, in my business, and have that, have that, that feed in. Um, depending on where you are, you might choose somebody different, right? So for me right now, I have more accountability people that I am um, mentoring me than I do have business people mentoring me um for another part of my for actually for quite a, a large part of my life i had only business people mentoring me um but right now i have accountability people mentoring me um and um who 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 i i look to and these are godly men who i look to to um to give me insights to i share insights with them and they share insights with me and the relationship is not one where they know more than me or whatever. It's not, it's not that kind of um, above and below thing. We, we are sharpening each other. Um, uh, and so, um, but with other people, I know there are um, some people who I mentor who I am leading and I'm hoping that they will get to a stage where we both begin to sharpen each other. Yes. Um, so, so, so that's not afraid of them getting to that oh, point where they can point to you. Yeah, you can't be. You cannot be. I mean, yep. if which which is what I mean. I I do. I say to some of my people, 
if I'm mentoring you for over two years consistently, I've failed, right? Ooh. At some point, we have to have a break and you, you have to, you know, absolutely grow, expand, da, da, da. Come back, yeah, yeah. let's chat and let's, and then let, let's talk about where you want to go next and let's see if I'm the right person to go there with you, right? So I, I because I know, I, tr I believe there's enough people in this world that God's going to send my way yeah, for me yeah. to help on their journey, right? I don't need to worry about keeping people in uh, being mentored by me for the next year because I've planned my budget. That is, that is just not it. Because if you are changing people's lives, they're going to go talk to people. So, yep, and, yep. I mean, to, to wrap this up, I'm a NED, a non-exec director in quite a few companies, right? And I have not advertised for any of those roles. I have not gone on an interview for those roles, nothing like that. What's happened is, People have, uh, have, have heard about me, heard about what I can do, heard about the transformation that I bring into other people's businesses. And they say, I want that guy to come into my business and help me transform my business, right? Yeah. And that's how I, I um, work with other people. So, um, and that's again, comes back to an earlier point I made, become the best yeah. at what you do right yeah. become the very best at what you do educate yourself skill up up skill as somebody put in the chat learn your craft become the best yeah. at what you do and everyone will seek you and this is biblical because when solomon was building the temple god called out to him three guys i want you to go get those guys because they were the best at yeah. what they do yeah. right so so the thing is it sounds risky but actually it's the lowest risk possible yeah. if you're the best at what you do everybody wants to deal with you or everybody who understands value wants to deal with you if you're the best at what you do people who want to become the best want to deal with you and people who are the best recognize that you're the best and want to talk to you so it is it is a phenomenal thing to do which is to be led by the holy spirit be the best and, and have that focus in your mind to be the best because a city, um, a city that's set on a hill cannot be hit. I want us to end on that and just keep those thoughts, become the best of what you do. Uh, we've just got over nine o'clock. Roy, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you for the access I have to you. Thank you for the relationship we're building. Um, uh, we're about to do some really great things that the world will see very soon. And I really appreciate um, in the short time I've known you, um, the, the conversations we've had and how you've been, just been really open and just also very open to also um, come speak to this community and serve this community. So I'm, I'm trusting that we can bring you over and over. You've said so many things this evening. We need to hear about um, that divorce situation and how you guys came <laughs> back. And a lot of, there's so Absolutely. much, there's so much that I think we can learn um, from you. And, and you said something and I'm just really, we really need to stop now because we're going to go to that conversation. When you said that thing about, you know, people just want to keep people. And I, especially from the church, I don't understand why, why the church can be so insecure and not allow people move on. But we're not going to have that conversation today. We'll have that conversation some, some other day. I want to say, yeah. Great thank stuff. you. Thank you so much, Roy. Thank you so much. This community, we're grateful to have people like you come speak to us. And everybody, we're back again next week, Monday. Um, I would introduce my guests at some point for next week, Monday. Thanks for hanging out with us. Everybody, make sure you have a great week. The team and I are still working on, on plans, on the things we're going to do on this group. But this group is going to be thriving. This group is going to be buzzing. We're going to bring real information, real help, great help, share our successes, and win together. Have a good evening, everybody, and God bless. Thanks, everyone. Good evening.